Have you ever wanted to make your own animated pictures in a video game? Well, with this machine, not only can you make one picture, but with the push of a button, you can have a second picture too! Oh, wait, wait a minute, it, it's buffering. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Scrap Mechanist channel. Today, I have something very special to show you. These are creations that are unlike anything I have made before. They are basically GIF makers. That's right, you can make your own animated looping images with these things, which is basically what a GIF image is. So these things go by a couple of different names, of those being Fenicistoscope, Fantascope, or Stroboscope. Now these things were invented back in 1832 by a Belgian physicist named Joseph Plateau, and these f paved the way for the entire film industry that we see today. This is basically the beginning of motion picture. So what we're going to do in this episode is we're going to take a look at what exactly they do, and then I'm going to give you kind of a little bit of an explanation of what I had to go through in order to figure out how to build these things, and then... I saved the best for last because I've built my own version of one that actually allows you to have two different images, two separate sequences on the same mechanism. And the way that works is probably one of my coolest visual things that I like to watch in this game. So I can't wait to show you all this awesome stuff. Let's get to it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the first one that I built, which is also the simplest. No coincidence there. And first, I'm just going to show you what it looks like. So if you look close, you can see that this is a spinning Mario coin. It does a spin and a bounce. Alright, now what I want to do is we're going to take a look inside to see what is actually going on inside here. And after that, we're going to go on to the other slightly more interesting ones. Alright, so inside, you can see we have nine frames. And each one has a different stage of the animation painted onto it, and it has to be an odd number of frames because across, exactly across from one frame has to be a gap, otherwise you're not going to see anything. And if it's an even number of frames, then the frames are all going to be blocking each other. So you have to have an odd number of frames so you can see the other frame through the gaps. Now what I had to do in order to build these things was first build a disc, and this disc is I think 41 blocks wide uh, in diameter, 41 block diameter. And then I had to um, equally space nine different frames around the circumference of the disc. And that was one of the more interesting parts. Because what I had to do was I actually attach, my method was attaching an arm on a bearing right into the center here and extending it out towards the edge of the uh, disc. And then what I would do is I wanted nine frames. So 360 divided by nine is 40, so that means 40 degrees will go into 360 degrees nine times. So what I did was I put the arm on a bearing, extended it out to the edge, and I put a bearing down right where the arm ended on the edge. Then I would rotate the arm by 40 degrees and it would point here, so I put another bearing down. I'd rotate it by another 40 and it would point here, so I put another bearing down. So I did that until I got back to my starting point and I ended up with exactly nine frames that are all equally spaced apart. And then I just had to turn all the frames to face inwards, which is just a matter of 40 degrees plus 40 degrees as you go all the way around. Um, and then what I had to do was I put this blinder up. So what this blinder does is it actually only allows a small part of it to be visible at a time. Otherwise, you'd be seeing about three different frames at the same time if this blinder wasn't there. And then what I also did to increase the visual aspect of it was you can see that with shadows on, there's light shining down right where the blinder is showing. So that way, I, I, you can see I put a little sun, sunlight or skylight here. So that way, the brightest part is right where the main frame should be. So if we go ahead and head back out here, we can take a look at it now with this new perspective on what it actually is. You can see how bright the coin is. And sometimes you see flashes of the coin uh, through the gaps elsewhere, but they're not as bright compared to the main one right in the center there. So it really draws the eye to the main part of the animation that makes it stand out that much more and makes it a little bit more easily readable. It's not quite as, re as readable as a real Fenicistoscope is, but considering this is just a game, I was really blown away that it even worked at all. 
And if you couldn't tell, the whole thing is driven by thrusters um, on its own uh, loose bearing right there. So now, now that we know what this does and we know how it works, let's take a look at the, some of the more um, complex ones. We're going to start off with this one over here. Now this one isn't too much more complicated, it's mostly just a lot bigger. And I am actually extremely surprised that this thing does not fall apart when it spins, because sometimes this thing spins incredibly fast. But let's just take a look at the scale of this thing compared to the other one. The other one was 9 frames and 41 blocks in diameter. This one is 15 frames, and it is 139 blocks in diameter. So the scale of this thing is just massive compared to the other one. And I just thought the amount of centripetal force acting on all of these frames on a single bearing was just going to make them all fly all over the place and tear apart. But surprisingly, that has not happened yet. And you can see the blinder is also much bigger. And I did not want to build an entire box around this thing, so we're not using any, any skylights or anything like that. Not to mention the sun's on the side. Anyway, um, so let's go ahead and... Before we get into, there's 64 thrusters in this thing, by the way, 64 thrusters to get this thing going. Now let's go ahead, let's get our lift out of the way over there, and we're gonna, we're gonna see how this thing looks. Alright, so it's gonna pick up speed, and it might randomly just incredibly boost in speed. It, it like, re it reaches like a, a friction threshold where all of a sudden it just, it just increases, oh, there it goes. It just re reached the threshold where it just doubled in speed. But it actually works better when it gets this fast because you can see the guy walking a lot faster and it's a lot more natural of a, of a gait. I feel like it should have some like cool, smooth walking music to go to. Yeah, that's not right. Good enough. All right, well, let's take a look at this thing in action. I do have particles turned off. You can see I've used the suspension to allow this to uh, move around without conflicting with itself because I needed to attach the switch to all the thrusters. <laughs> look at this thing go, it's like a laser show. Um, anyway, I had to attach the switch to these thrusters, but I also had to have these thrusters pass uh, roll across the ground and it was hard to make a connection point without actually having it roll through the connection point So what I've done is I put a suspension there so that way it doesn't collide But I mean look at how fast these things are moving It is absolutely incredible that these things are not flying off their hinges um, So yeah, it's surprisingly stable. It has not fallen apart on me yet um, So it seems like it's, it's a consistent thing. You can just get it to work and it slows down and we get our guy a little in the middle of his walking. All right, now, we've we've had the original small and simple, we've had a big and simple one, and now we're gonna go to, I think it's a medium-sized one, but it's much more complicated. And the reason why this is a lot more complicated is because this has two different images to show. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you the first one. If we go ahead and press the button, you can see that it uh, it is a potion bottle. This is a Zelda themed one. So it is a potion bottle that empties and fills back up And you can see the cork uh, subtly coming in and closing up there as it fills back up I'm gonna go ahead and stop it. It's important to uh, to stop it before you do the, the transition process And we, when we press the blue button, you can see we get a buffering screen here to let you know that the next image is loading And after it's done the buffering screen lifts up, and when you press the green button, now we have a treasure chest with a green rupee popping in and out. Going along again with the Zelda theme. So yeah, those are the two animations. Now the best part about this thing is how it actually works. Because the interesting thing about this uh, the inconvenient thing about it is it's not as easy as just um, painting a frame on both sides because the problem with painting a frame on both sides is that the paint bleeds through. So if I wanted to go ahead and give red potion paint to this here and then I wanted to go paint the other side, uh oh, 
you can see that um, whatever we paint on one side is going to mirror onto the other side. So I had to actually create two separate frames and um, I did my own little way of hiding them so that you can't actually see one. Because if you notice, when you're looking, you don't see anything on the back of here, so it's not like just a thicker one that's rotating. We've actually hidden the other frames. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at how this thing works, because this one is a little bit more complex. And the way we're gonna do that is I'm actually going to, I just added a bar in here so that I can cut out the ceiling without losing the frame, hopefully. So we're gonna cut out the entire ceiling, and then we're going to take a look from above and see exactly what's going on when these frames change. And it looks, it is one of my favorite things to watch. It, it looks so mesmerizing. All right, so I've gone ahead and cut away the ceiling and put a seat right in the middle here. And I've also attached the switches to the seat so I can control this thing from the seat. So when it's on, you can see it's just rotating around in a pretty quick circle. Now the changing process, let's see what happens here. So I'm gonna wait for it to stop. And when I press number two, I'm going to actually initiate the change process so you can see what happens. Here we go. And there you have it. That is everything that is going on while this thing changes. And I think I can change it while it's still rotating. Um, so let's go ahead and hopefully it doesn't. I know that sometimes it, it's, it's glitched out on me, but we're going to go ahead and try it. Uh, it's breaking. It's breaking. All right, how about this? I'm going to do it. I'm going to control it nice and slow. All right, I think I can actually change this thing if I, if I give it a nice slow rotation and it looks really, really cool. So here we go. How cool is that? Can you tell why this is like one of my favorite things to watch now? Now I'm changing it back. Uh oh, looks like it got caught on something. Oh wait, did I? I think I might've made that bar a little bit too low. Oh yeah, I did. There's the problem. Okay, so now the difficult thing about this was is putting the blinder in was actually harder than I thought because if you notice when I change it, watch what happens. Oops. If I change it, watch what happens to the blinder because the blinder actually has to collapse in order to make room for all the frames to come out. Now, I know that that bar that I put in is actually getting in the way of some of the frames, but that's okay. So yeah, um, everything here, this was actually all made before the weld tool, before the logic gates, before the blueprint tool. Um, so some mistakes were made and I had to start over and I had a lot of really tough times with this thing, but I finally got it to work and this is completely vanilla and I am really happy with the way this turned out. So what you guys can do is you guys can actually paint over all these and make your own animations. Everything's already hooked up. Everything's already set to go. You can just um, paint them black again or paint them a different color and put your own pictures in here and show me what kind of animations you guys can come up with if you guys actually decide to do that because I think that'd be pretty cool. Um, as far as I know, these are the first kind of uh, stroboscopes that I've, I've ever seen in the game. I haven't seen anyone else do anything like this. So I'm really happy to um, to give this to you guys as kind of like a, a slate for you to use. You can create a 15 frame one, you can create a 9 frame one. Um, how many frames is this one? I actually, I completely forgot. It says 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, this is a 9 frame one as well. Now a little bit of advice before you guys do this. Sometimes this one glitches out when you spawn the map. And what you have to do is go inside because sometimes one of the frames is not working and all you have to do is go inside it's usually one of the treasure chest frames but just go to that frame that's stuck and you just gotta delete one block or a couple blocks out of it until it gets unstuck from the bottom whoops not that block do not delete the middle block I just made a big mistake it's okay I, I backed up I backed up this map so it's not um it's not gonna matter uh, actually now we can we can take this and we can dissect it and if you guys want to, you can also watch it change just by looking through the windows over here. Oh, the remote control glitch is happening. Look, <laughs> if I press this button, 
This frame. <laughs> I broke the frame off, but it still works. So that's awesome. We can still see how it works. All right, so as you can see, when I press the button here, the back part opens up. Oh, it broke. So as you can see, when I press this button here, nothing happens. It's great, isn't it? Oh, there we go. Oh, jeez. I don't know what's going on there. Let's try that one more time. We press the button. This back part opens up. That one flips out, turns around so it can flip down on to the other side. And there you have it. That is, now we have an empty slot. This is where the frame used to be. That's where it was hiding before. And if we press the button, it should open up and put it right back into that slot. So you can see. It opens up and closes it right back into the slot. So that's really cool that the remote control glitch actually helped me show you in a little bit more detail how that thing is working. All right, guys, I really hope you guys do something with this and um, make your own animations with it. I'd love to see what you can come up with. And you got 15 frames and you got nine frames and you got a, a double animation thing. I'm sure you could create some cool themed ones. Um, but remember, don't really don't try not to change these while it's moving because that, that's when it can really break. Um, so I want to thank you guys for watching. If you guys like this, please leave a like. If you guys want to see more, don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment down below telling me what you think and what you'd like to see next. And I'll see you next time on the Scrap Mechanics channel. This is actually too much to handle. We're going to take some of this and stick it on as well. Wow, that was a huge, huge boost into what we are. I don't even know what to do. I'm overwhelmed. I am overwhelmed with options and possibilities.